A fair warning before I start, this week's video is probably going to be a bit rough around the edges. Um, I had two very busy weeks, so I wasn't able to actually upload anything last week, I'm sorry about that. And this week is going to be a bit smaller in scope than the usual. On my end, things should start to calm down next week, so I should be able to get back on track. So in the meantime, thank you for watching and enjoy. As things stand right now, I'm not very good at drawing people, uh, right? It's not super obvious on this channel because it's still young, but if you go in the depths of my Instagram account, you're going to find a lot of buildings and a lot of rooms, but not very many people. And if I do draw them, I go to absurd lengths to avoid giving them faces. I want to change that and I feel like pixel art is probably a good way to do that. So yeah, I want to start drawing people and I want to do it the same way that I approached environments. So I'm going to start with references, starting small and then hopefully expanding onto things like animation and then hopefully bigger sprites, things like portraits, things like that. So for references, I'm going to take the roster of Civilization VI, right? Partly because it has a nice roster of different body types and skin tones, that sounds like good practice. And partly because I've spent a thousand hours into that game and I would like to pretend it was worth it. At the scale that I want to work on this week, the thing that I'm most scared of are clothes. Uh, so I'm going to start with Hojo Tokimune of Japan. He has a fairly simple, fairly stylized look uh, that I feel will be not too difficult to reproduce in pixel art. So let's get into it. I started with a canvas of 64 by 64 and that's mainly because I want my sprites to be roughly the size that you can find in like Super Nintendo games. The sprite themselves I would like to make between 30 pixels tall and 50 pixels tall. Hojo looks pretty tall in the game compared to other, um, other players so I made him pretty close to the limit. Not quite up there because that's, that's for Gilgamesh. It's for Gilgabro, but yeah, he, he's going to be pretty tall. I started by drawing a pretty simple skeleton figure, uh, just to get the proportions right, uh, get some idea of what the pose was going to be. At this point, if you think he's a little bit too beefy, uh, yeah, he is. Uh, I'll um, make him a bit skin skinnier a few times as I go on. And that's kind of the advantages of taking a very like layered approach to this. If you need to change anything, it's not too difficult. After that, I moved on to adding the like main kind of details that I was going to add in the final piece. And that's the same kind of usual dilemma that you have to face when you use a reference is how much detail can you keep versus how much detail there is in the reference. So in my case, I had to abandon the little rope that holds his top together, or at least I think that's what it does. I'm not entirely sure, but I managed to keep the pads that he has in his arms. Uh, you can see right now I placed them in the wrong place, but I'll move them later, and I kept the belt. For the shading, I took the same approach that I did for the inn that I drew um, a couple of weeks ago, and I went on to just shade it in a 2-bit grayscale palette, so that's just using four colours. That way I could keep a somewhat consistent level of rendering across the whole piece and I didn't have to worry about the colouring until way later on. It's kind of interesting how little room you have at this small scale. Like, I, I thought 50 pixels were gonna, was going to be plenty, but you really have elements that just can only really be one pixel. Like you can see the lapels on his shirt up top are really just one pixel. After that I moved on to the colouring, like I said I'd already taken care of the shading so it was mostly a case of just using the bucket tool and yeah figuring out which colours were most appropriate. I started with colours that were a bit too saturated and I had to tone them down quite a bit as I went on, partly to fit the kind of medieval vibe of it and partly because well, I started with fairly unsaturated tones, so I had to make the whole thing consistent. Now, if you're a Civ player and you're looking at this and you're like, well, huh, I didn't remember Hojo having two swords. Uh, you're right, and I'm an idiot, and you're going to see I'm going to draw the two things here as swords, when in reality the one on the right is his sheath, I think is what it's called, the thing that you put the sword in. You're going to see me fiddle with the face quite a bit as I go on and I actually even continued to fiddle with it after I stopped recording because I wasn't super happy with it. But yeah, it is really challenging to... I, I'm already not very good at drawing faces, but it is really, really challenging to work on them at such a small scale. Alright, so that's it for the time-lapse. Here's what the end product look, looks like. 
I took the time to make a small uh, kind of character sheet out of out of him. I'm imagining this as kind of a character select, uh, not really in the way that it's presented in Civ 6, but more in the way that you expect a character select to look like in a combat game. There are still a few things that I'm not super happy with, like the shape of the face and the expression is a bit simplistic and I don't feel like I managed to get the feel of the um, original quite uh, that well, but I'm still pleasantly surprised with what I was able to muster. Uh, this is fine. I'll try out different characters later, perhaps some that are a bit more challenging, uh, and try out to learn how to draw different skin tones. I don't feel like I quite nailed Hojo's skin, skin tone here. Uh, he's a bit too too white. <laughs> uh, so that's going to have to be for another video though. I hope you enjoyed this one, even though it was a bit shorter than usual. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.